Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to EMS systems. Today we're going to be discussing how it works. Now, are we ambulance drivers? Do people call 911 and say, hey, send me two idiots that can drive really fast? Well, unfortunately in the past, yes. Up until the 1960s, the most of the ambulance services were run by the funeral homes because they had hearses where they could lie, lay a patient down in. Now, imagine this. The ambulance is dispatched to a car crash on the interstate. Upon arrival, they find three patients, one of which is already dead. The other two are critical. The first thing they would do is grab the dead patient and take them to their funeral home. They would return back in, say, an hour or so and identify if the other two were still alive or not. If they were still alive, only then would they take them to the hospital. Now, as you can imagine, this turned into a major conflict of interest. And in 1966, a report was written called The Accidental Death and Disability, The Neglected Disease of Modern Society. Ooh, that's a mouthful. It's also known as the White Papers, and that created the Highway Safety Act that set national standards for EMS under, under the Department of Transportation. And today, we are set up in four distinct categories, and that is EMRs, or first responders, and these are your police, your firefighters, your highway patrolmen, EMTs, advanced EMTs, and paramedics. Now, the White Papers created us and created a situation where EMS were recognized as medical professionals. We operate under the license of a local physician that allows us to initiate life-saving procedures prior to and during transport. We have written orders, they are called offline standing orders or protocols, that say if you have a patient that presents in this way, we, you are permitted to do this treatment. However, not all the patients read the protocols and know how they're supposed to present. So when you have a question, you can call on the radio and get online permission to attempt a treatment or to give certain medications and that those are online protocols. Now, our program wants you to be workforce ready upon completion of our of our classes. We will be working with communication skills because you need to be able to talk to patients, family members, your other responders as well as ER staff. We will be working with you on documentation and we want you to know that we want you to become lifelong learners because medicine changes and practices that we do today might become obsolete in a couple of years and you need to stay current in modern medicine. You will also be certified in CPR this week. Now a certification is given to you by a organization, a company, or even a school. For example, you are curr currently enrolled in our program for a certificate. And upon completion of our program, you intend to apply to the state for state licensure, and that is regulated by the state health department. The White pa Papers also created 911. Prior to that, you would call the local fire department for any medical emergency. And once we set up an ambulance service, we now needed to create a place to take the patients. And hospitals started to set up emergency rooms. And hospitals also became specialty centers. For example, any burn patient in this, in this area would go to Vanderbilt. 
a, a cardiac patient to St. Thomas or a stroke patient to Skyline. The hospitals in this area have their own specialties, and we'll be talking about this throughout the program. There's more information for you to learn, but this is only a brief introduction into the program, and I hope that you enjoyed this brief uh, lecture. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.